in the capital itself, in the city centre, what remains of a police post after an incoming rocket. Welcome to Kabul. These days, the Afghan capital itself increasingly in the sights of the Taliban, by rockets, by suicide bombs, by gun attacks. The West has equipped the new police force with uniforms and weapons, and you see more of them on the streets than ever before. But in reality, the bubble of security around the capital is punctured ever more easily by the Taliban, fighting NATO and their fellow Afghans more effectively than ever. <laughs> Afghan police used to talk incessantly to reporters. Now they're ordered to keep shtum. Afghan civilians, however, so angry and frustrated at the state they're now in, will drive up to talk to you. I left the countryside to come here to be safe. And here the government is hitting us, the Taliban rocket us, don't know what to do and where to run to. We are completely disillusioned. Disillusion is now the Afghan national mood. So who are the Taliban? How come they're back all but surrounding Kabul, seven years after the Americans supposedly drove them out of the country? This program's come here to meet the Taliban to find out. After making contact in Kabul, security is now so weak you have to fly to the south. Our Taliban contacts risked the Kabul to Kandahar road below. Even they were briefly kidnapped. It was just a misunderstanding. Eventually, everyone met up and headed out from Kandahar, the southern capital. The rendezvous had been set out along rough roads and wadis. The place they were heading for was just 10 miles from Kandahar itself. They must wait. These are the final seconds in a process which has taken months to organize. Eventually, the guard returns. Everything is all right. These are men who may die for you if you're their guest. They may hack your head off if you're an intruder. It is a regional headquarters for Taliban fighters. Some don't want to show their faces. The compound belonged to the former Taliban commander, Mullah Dadullah, who was killed by NATO last year. He gave his life in God's will. When he was killed, 20,000 more came forward in the name of Dadullah. They're now behind him. This is the Taliban way. When one is killed, another comes in, then another. We don't leave the ground empty. The only sign of Pakistani influence here, Aftar Punjabi, the weapons instructor and former Pakistani soldier. It may look a little ragtag, but the Taliban are killing more NATO soldiers than ever before, at least 40 in the past month. Deadly roadside bombs with improved technology, suicide attacks, better adapted ambushes using Afghan police and army uniforms, which they were only too happy to demonstrate to our camera. And you see such uniforms being used in this operation. These Talibs supplied us with a video showing them wandering out onto a main road. And not any old road, but the main Kabul to Kandahar highway again. You begin to appreciate why Afghans advise you not to drive along this road. They're attacking a compound, using the moving traffic as cover. If NATO sends in an airstrike now, they may hit the traffic, killing yet more civilians, though usually the attackers are long gone by the time the Apache helicopters or jets appear. It's an open, daylight assault, almost leisurely in style, across the country's main highway. This is the confidence of the Taliban today. No wonder America's commander said last week that the West is not winning the war here. So why are they fighting? No talk here of Osama bin Laden or Al-Qaeda or Mullah Omar. 
They just talk about feeling alienated by an Afghan government which hasn't delivered. People are getting fed up with the lies the government has told them. Also, there is no work for people. They do this because they need a piece of bread to eat. Also, they want to defend their independence, Islam and Afghan national pride. That's why they come and support the Taliban. But surely someone's got to negotiate eventually with the government. No, no, we don't see any need for talks with this government. Actually, there's no such thing as the government. The issue here is foreign countries, and we deal with them by fighting like this. Jihad is the only way for us, our jihad. A feeble government, humiliation at foreign occupation, grinding poverty and corruption, the essentials of the Afghan stalemate. Right outside the Taliban's compound, they point to recent flood damage and say nobody's come to help. Officials in Kabul and Kandahar say if they came here they'd be shot or worse, and they'd be right. It is the Afghan vicious circle. Rebuilding this country can't happen without security. Securities evaporating all the time. And when it comes to the fighting, the Talibs say there's no problem with money. Do the Taliban pay more than the government? Yes, yes. The Taliban pay them, care for them, and also this is the way of God. They pray and look after them. So people join the Taliban for money? No, no. They join up for Islam and God's way. So the money, where does all this money come from? The money's coming in from Islamic countries such as Pakistan, Iran and Saudi Arabia. They are open too about showing their differences from the Taliban who took this country over a decade ago. These men like a whiskey and they like a bet. Outside the compounds, the villagers not only permitted to enjoy traditional Afghan pastimes, like pitching their fighting goats against each other, these new Taliban positively seem to encourage such things. Furthermore, the villagers openly bet on the outcome of the fights, just the kind of un-Islamic activity the old-style Taliban would have beaten you for at the very least. These are not the unsmiling foot soldiers of Mullah Omar, but the new Afghan incarnation of that shorthand word, Taliban. Equally at a local wedding celebration, there was music, which the original Taliban would have banned. Many of these men, loyal to the maverick warlord Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, and if not exactly keen on music, they seemed prepared at least to tolerate it. Changing times for a changing Taliban, perhaps. So there's a sense in all this that the Taliban have gone back to their roots among Afghans, not Pakistanis. Afghans tired of an occupied, increasingly corrupt and still failed state. That failure underlined by the coffins of soldiers aboard the plane back north to Kabul. Traversing a land where it is the Taliban who are making gains at the moment, not NATO.